Who's going to win in the Battle of the Foundations? Will it be Lisa Eldridge or will it be IT Cosmetics? If you'd like to find out, then please keep watching. Hello, Des here and thank you so much for joining me for this Battle of the Foundations. In the red corner we've got Lisa Eldridge's Seamless Skin Foundation and in the blue corner we've got IT Cosmetics Your Skin But Better Foundation. Now which one will be right or best for my over 50 mature skin? So before we get into the difference between the two foundations and the similarities, let me just show you what skin we're talking about here. So I'm actually 67 years old. I don't think my skin's too bad for my age. It's wrinkly, it's aging, but it's normal, or at least it's normal until my skin hits some fragrance, which it seems to have done quite recently because I've just started to get a little bit of a dry patch above this eye. And that is a telltale sign that my skin has touched fragrance. And I know why, it's because sometimes trying to find really, really lovely bath oil or um, shower gel that doesn't have fragrance in they just look so medicinal so I just thought recently oh do you know what it, it won't be long on my skin I'll just be having a shower or a bath I'll get some of that fantastic L'Occitane en Provence shower gel and I think I'm probably not washing it off properly but anyway that's fine. So I'm going to come close right now and show you what issues we're dealing with with my mature skin. So if you look closely, I hope you can see I've got some red veins and actually I something weird, a little red thing has just popped up here. I don't know what that's about. I mean, there is some discoloration, but it's not terrible. I have these lovely brown lesions, which are sun damage, but they're just different kind of sun, sun damage. I've got lines, I've got 11s. Let me move my hair out of the way. I've got eye bags. I've got um, discoloration under my eyes. I've got some moles. I've got lots of dents and more lines under here. And oh, look, you can see my moustache, <laughs> a bit of redness under my nose. So that gives you an idea of the sort of skin we're dealing with here. Now, you may have noticed I've got my eye makeup on. So I've got eyeshadow mascara and I've done my eyebrows as well but that is it. The rest of my skin is completely empty or devoid of any foundation or concealer or anything. So this is me au naturel. So before we get into actually applying the foundation let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you about the foundations, each of them, the similarities, the differences, the types of marketing and then I'm going to apply one side of my face with the IT Cosmetics one side of my face with the Lisa Eldridge and I'm going to do a wear test so I'll come back in a few hours and then at the end of the day or at the end of the evening and then we'll see how we've got on. So firstly you're probably wondering why have I chosen these two foundations? Well if I'm perfectly honest it's because I've got them both in my collection and they are both high-end although the Lisa Eldridge is more expensive. They're obviously aimed at the same type of market so I thought it'd be worth comparing and contrasting the two. Actually I'll tell you another reason as well, Trying going back to the fragrance issue, trying to find a, a high-end foundation that doesn't have fragrance in it is a bit difficult. So one of the foundations I looked at was the Dior, which uh, Kimberly of Pretty Over 50 had recommended and I thought, oh, that'd be really, really good. And I actually went online to buy it, actually bought it and without looking at the ingredients. And then afterwards, just a few minutes later, I looked at the ingredients and went, oh my Lord, it's got perfume in it. So I managed to cancel the order and that was around about the same price. I think it was maybe in between the It Cosmetics and the um, Lisa Eldridge. So it just goes to show when you are allergic to fragrance, as I am, you really need to check the ingredients because I honestly didn't think that foundation would have fragrance in it. So there you go. So the Lisa Eldridge is cruelty free and vegan and the It Cosmetics is cruelty free but not necessarily vegan and you'd need to check each individual foundation to find out whether it is in fact a vegan. The Lisa Eldridge retails for £44 for 30ml or one fluid ounce in the UK and It Cosmetics retails for £32.50 for 30ml and one fluid ounce. Now how to find the right shade? 
so on Lisa Eldridge's site, so actually going back, when I bought the Lisa Eldridge Foundation, I was able to buy the little cards in advance. This was a kind of pre-sale thing that you could do if you wanted to check what shade you were. So I was able to do that. I don't think the cards are available anymore. So what you have to do is you just have to go on the site and check out the descriptions. Now I um, have a video about that and I'll link that up in the corner for you. It was very interesting. Some of my subscribers and watchers disagreed with me about the shade that I had chosen, which was shade 14. However, I think it's really difficult to find the right shade for your face and for your neck, because actually when I went into the store to actually buy the foundation, the um, makeup artist who served me, she said that my neck was a different colour from my face, which it probably is. I think it is yellower is what, what she said. So I went with the shade 14, which is called a light medium with rosy undertones, which I think more or less describes my face, but it may not describe my neck. And actually, I do think that in the summer, if I continue to enjoy wearing this foundation, I might look for another colour, maybe a 15, um, which has more yellow in it, because if I am in the sun a bit, then I do tend to go a little bit darker and a more yellowy tone might suit me. But I mean, I am a cool toned person. I don't wear orange or yellow. So I think that kind of says that I'm more rosy. So for IT Cosmetics, I chose a 34 medium cool. Now there is a shade finder on their website. It's a tool and you can try on virtually the different shades. Now I didn't use that because I'd used IT Cosmetics CC Cream before and I think I had the same type of shade in that. So I just use that as a basis for choosing this particular shade. But it's true to say you could try the shade finder. I had a go with it this morning. I found it quite difficult not to pick the shades and try them on, but actually telling the difference once the, the photos were on the screen. But it's definitely worth a try if you're not sure what shade you are. Now, let me tell you about the Lisa Eldridge Foundation. So this is what it says about it. This is the marketing. This intelligently formulated skin-friendly foundation has a customizable medium coverage that can be dialed up or down. Self-setting, it blends effortlessly to smooth and unify skin with a notably soft focus. The formula contains a natural mesh-like ingredient which completely fuses with skin after blending. The final finish is neither dewy nor flat matte, but something skin-like and in-between which I'm sure is what we're all after. Now, it doesn't sell itself as having skin-loving ingredients, but it does actually then go on to say that it does have various ingredients that protect the skin, such as UGT extract, which helps stimulate the skin's own defense system to protect it from free radical damage, thus reducing inflammation and premature aging. It also contains glycerin, which is the gold standard of moisturizing ingredients. It also goes on to say it's cruelty-free and vegan and it's free from alcohol, parabens, talc, fragrance, essential oils, nylon, microplastics and SPF. Now onto it cosmetics and how it markets the foundation. It says showing us how skincare and makeup can be married for ultimate efficacy, the Your Skin But Better Foundation Plus Skincare offers all-day hydration and coverage while feeding the skin with good few ingredients that will smooth tone and refine skin and texture over time. Infused, ah, now this is interesting, infused with microfine illuminating pearl powder, and we'll come back to that in a sec, uber hydrating industry favorite hyaluronic acid, soothing aloe vera extract, exfoliating hepes acid, and I have to be careful how I say that, and nourishing vitamin E and B5, this lightweight, medium coverage, buildable formula promises to improve skin in as little as two weeks. I don't think it's going to do that with mine, but maybe younger skins it would. All the while blurring imperfections, minimising the look of pores and lending an enviable glow. OK, so this one, the IT Cosmetics mentions the word glow, which the Lisa Eldridge doesn't. I just wanted to say something about pearl powder. One of the reviewers said that she thought she could detect glitter in the foundation and she thought it must come from the pearl powder. But actually pearl powder shouldn't, as far as my research is concerned, and I looked at it up on Healthline, it shouldn't be doing that. It's actually ground, it's real pearls ground into a texture like corn flour. And it then has some very apparently skin loving properties like amino acids, minerals, including magnesium and potassium, and high levels of calcium. 
The similarities are that both start their ingredients with water and dimethicone. Both suggest application with a brush, which I'm not going to be doing today because it's not a brush that I've got. They both use, suggest using a very flat brush. And both are marketed as medium coverage foundations. So without further ado, let me start applying them. So we'll start with the Lisa Eldridge. And here it is, it's this bottle here. Now there's been some controversy about this bottle because you can only lie it flat unless you keep it in the box. It's got this little dent here, which means you can lie it flat and it won't move around, but you can't stand it upside down because it's got a pointy end. But I don't mind. So we're going to apply the Lisa Eldridge on my right side and the IT Cosmetics on my left side. So here's the lovely Lisa Eldridge bottle. Let me come a bit closer. It's beautiful glass, very heavy. You have to lie it on its side because it's got a pointy end. So you can't lie it or you can't stand it up rather, but that's okay. I don't mind that because I put my foundations in a drawer at the moment anyway. So we'll put a couple of pumps onto my right hand so I don't forget which side is which. It's not really runny, you can see it's staying put on my hand. Let me get my mirror. Right, let me come a bit closer and I'm going to see if I can apply it. I'm actually applying it with my left hand, I'm not sure this was the best idea really, but never mind, it's because I want to be able to see and I want you to be able to see how I'm applying it. What I am going to do afterwards is I'm going to um, just pat it with a dampened sponge just to set it. But I don't like using a brush really. I'm not, I'm not terribly keen on using brushes for foundation. So we're going to try and... Actually, I haven't used a huge amount. Maybe I've... Let me just get my mirror again and just check. Um, seems to be going on very well with not very much, which is amazing. Now, actually, what I haven't told you is in terms of skincare, I have got on at the moment, I've got my SPF, which is my beauty pie, which is my absolute gold standard. I am going to be doing a beauty pie review in the near future. So very keen on, on the uh, SPF that I use of theirs. And I've mixed it with my vitamin C powder, which I also have been using for a while. I don't know whether it's any different from using another form of vitamin C, but it's, it's very easy to, you just kind of put a couple of pumps of this powder into your SPF. That's what I do anyway, and then put it on. I don't use a moisturizer as well. I don't find I need one. My skin is quite normal. Oh, look, I've got a lovely zip coming here. Even at my age, I'm still getting zits. How nice. Never mind. We'll just cover that up. I must say, it's going on beautifully smoothly. It really is. And... Let me just put a bit more around my nose. There we are. So I think that's about as halfway as we can go, really. Right, I've had a good look in my magnifying mirror and I have to say I've still got some product left on my hand. So I'll save that and I will compare it now to the It Cosmetics which we're going to put on this side. So here's the It Cosmetics bottle. And it is a glass bottle as well. It's a different shape but it's the same amount of uh, product in the bottle. It's not quite as beautiful looking as the Lisa Eldridge and it is cheaper. So let's give that a shake. Now what I'm going to do, I think I'll pop it next to the Lisa Eldridge on the same hand because then you can see the cut, the shade difference. Yeah, now that is more liquidy. And this is my favourite word when it comes to foundations, it's a bit more biscuity <laughs> and it's cooler. I hope you can see the difference there and it's runnier as well, that's for sure. So let us now apply... Oh yeah, it's much runnier as soon as you put it on the skin. Now let me come close again. Yeah, it goes on much more easily in terms of it, it being runny. Its consistency is, is very, very different. Just getting my mirror. It 
it's looking a bit darker to me as I look in my mirror here which may well be the case so yeah I mean it's definitely oh gosh actually you know it's really interesting the contrast is really quite obvious to me I don't know whether it will be for you but it definitely is for me and later on I'll be going out in natural light so you'll be able to see how it looks at the moment I'm in front of my my special you know my my camera lights as it were so um because I don't have an easy way of doing natural light in the room that I film in but I will go in the garden a bit later and we'll have a look there Okay, there you have it. Now, I really didn't think that I'd be able to see such a difference in shade between the Lisa Eldridge and the It Cosmetics because the It Cosmetics is so much darker. It's quite amazing. I never really noticed it before, but there you go. Anyway, hopefully nobody will notice when I go out later. I don't know whether I really need to, but I think I just will do a bit of uh, setting with my damp uh, beauty sponge. So I'm just going to dampen it a bit and then we'll just set it. I mean, apart from the colour, I, I think they both look pretty good. Let me just set it and then I'll come closer. And then we'll see how we go. Let me look. Okay, we're all set and this is what it's looking like at the moment. So here is the IT Cosmetics. Doesn't look like it's setting into fine lines. And here is the Lisa Eldridge also looking okay I would say. Now how they compare to my neck in terms of colour that would be interesting to note. I can't really see on camera at the moment but I guess when I play it back I might be able to see. So I'll come back a bit later. I'm going to finish my makeup but I'm not going to put any powder on so that we get a proper test of each foundations and see how they've worked out throughout the day. So I'll see you a bit later. So here we are in a four hour check-in. I'm trying to face the daylight. The weather is horrendous and it's just about to start raining. Let's just have a quick peek. It's all looking okay to me. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. I'll see you a bit later. So here we are at the eight hour check-in. I've got my toweling robe on because I'm just about to get ready to go out this evening. So. I think this is looking pretty good. I'm going to go to the party like this. I'm not going to put any powder or any extra things on the top of my foundation. I'm just going to leave my foundation and concealer as they are. And I will just tidy up my eyelids and maybe do something to the lipstick. And that's it. So I think that's looking pretty good for eight hours. But what I will do is I will come back if I'm still... <laughs> able to at the end of the evening and show you how it's fared. Okay so it's 12 hours in and this is the state of the makeup. I mean to be honest I've had a few glasses of wine so I probably can't see terribly well but perhaps all will be revealed when I look at this footage tomorrow but what from what <laughs> Honestly, I'm not drunk, I promise you. <laughs> I had two glasses of red wine and a tiny bit of champagne. So I do think this is looking pretty good. Now, so what I did was, after I last filmed, I put a very thin veil of beautiful hourglass ambient finishing powder on my skin and I touched up a few little zits with some uh, Laura Mercier secret camouflage. So I think that is looking pretty good. But anyway, all will be revealed, or at least we'll have a roundup of what we think about everything tomorrow morning. So I will see you then. So here we are, the morning after the night before, all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. And this morning I've decided to put the foundations on again so I have the IT on this side and I have the Lisa on that side. This time I've powdered, I've concealed, I've um, put some blusher on, lipstick and on my eyes as well and I think the result is as follows. The Lisa Eldridge just edges it over IT Cosmetics in terms of long wear and coverage but they are two quite different consistencies, even though they do have similar ingredients. So the IT Cosmetics is, as you saw um, earlier, the IT Cosmetics is runnier, 
so it's sheerer and maybe needs more application if you want more coverage whereas the Lisa Eldridge you really actually don't need that much as long as you've got some decent slip on your skin to put the foundation over I think the Lisa Eldridge has better coverage but let's just show you again so I'm coming in close I've only just applied it about half an hour ago so this is the it and this is the Lisa it's hard to say what I probably should have done is I should have put the it this side this morning and the Lisa that side so I really hope this video has given you some idea of the kind of coverage and longevity you can expect from both of these foundations I really hope this video has been helpful to you you found it useful in some way you've enjoyed watching me test out these two foundations on my mature over 50 skin if you have enjoyed it I'd really be grateful if you'd consider giving it a good thumbs up and better yet subscribing to the channel because it really helps YouTube's algorithm put my video in front of other over 50 year old women who might find the content useful and thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one Bye.